In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all as we gather here today to say farewell to Michael. Michael was a regular attendee at Mass here, and word of his passing has filled so many of our Mass scores with real sorrow. I've had several people over the past number of days remembering Michael, as we all do, as a lovely person, a great neighbour, and a real gentleman. And for all of you, his family, we know that you will miss him greatly. He was a real family man, loving nothing better than being in your company. And so today we offer you all our deepest of sympathies. Our sympathies to his immediate family first, to Anthony and Kenneth, Sinead and Michelle, to Michael's daughters-in-law and son-in-law, to his grandchildren, Shay, Donal, Alana, Lorcan, Anya, Neve, Evan, Cahill, Jack and Killian, and to his sisters too, Anne and Helen, his brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, nephews, nieces, and relatives and friends. In our ceremony today, we're going to pray for Michael. We're going to commend him to God and to commend him to the life of heaven. We're also going to take a few moments to remember who Michael was for each one of us. Because a funeral isn't only a time of saying farewell and grieving, it's also a time to remember the richness of the life that we shared together. We we'll commend God or we commend Michael to God, asking the angels to escort him on his journey so that he'll be with Maureen and all those we love who have gone before us. And so as we think now for a few moments of the time that we spent with Michael, we're also going to bring forward a few symbols that show the character that he was and speaks a lot of him. And Anthony is going to just tell us a little bit about them and about him. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming. Um, the grandchildren are going to bring some symbols that have been a big part of my father's life and bring back memories to paint a picture of the man that he was and the life that he lived. So Killian is going to come first and he's going to bring a trophy that dad won for pitch and put. Just the, the, the symbolization of that is about sport and all of the sports that dad loved. Um, he loved to watch sport, um, he's a very good boxer, he's a very good snooker player, um, he played a bit of soccer and when he retired he took up some pitch and put. And actually in his pitch and put he played down here in Laytown and um, he hit a wayward shot one day uh, which landed down on the beach and he went to play the shot from the beach, fell over and banged his head and he actually fractured his skull. Uh, drove home and ended up in hospital after it. Um, we still maintain that the ball was out of bounds and he shouldn't have been trying to play. Um, so Jack is going to bring forward the handbook uh, for the carers. So carers became a very important part of Dad's life in the last number of years as he became more vulnerable and they did a wonderful job with him. Um, he became a little bit transfixed with routine and making sure that they were in contact with him and everything else. So he spent a lot of time uh, uh, with, with those carers and they did a wonderful job with him. He spent the last uh, number of weeks in Dulik, uh, Silverstream Nursing Home, and they did a fantastic job with him. They really put us all at ease and he was very, very comfortable there. Uh, and Bridget, uh, who came to mind dad over weekends, she, she, she wasn't a carer, she was just a friend and that's how he referred to her. And uh, part of his sport, he, 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 she stayed on late to watch rugby matches with him when she shouldn't have been there, I suppose, to, to stay on because he watched that Rugby World Cup and he really enjoyed it. Uh, and I suppose the carer in chief was our sister Sinead, who lived only across the road and did a wonderful job with Dad. So Carl is going to bring forward a bowl of shamrock, uh, and, and that's his, Dad's sense of St. Patrick's Day. He just loves St. Patrick's Day. Going back when, he was, when we were very young, when I was very young, uh, the routine was we went to Mass, and uh, then we went in to see the parade, then he brought us up to Crow Park to see the Railway Cup final, 
and uh, spent the day singing Irish songs. Um, in, in latter years, he started to go to St. Mary's nursing home and sang in the afternoon, and he sang Irish songs. And only recently, at St. Patrick's Day, he told us all that I'll take you home again, Kathleen, was the true St. Patrick's Day song. So Evan is going to bring forward um, a, a certificate that Dad got for work. So this marked 30 years in Pitney Bowes. So Dad actually worked for 34 years in Pitney Bowes. He worked in Lampson's before that, and he worked in HB before that for 27 years. So all in all, he worked for 61 years. Um, and we met a number of his friends and colleagues from uh, Pitney Bowes over the last couple of days with the funeral. And they all told us that Dad was a very positive, always smiling, usually whistling and probably singing, and that he worked very hard. Um, when he came home every day, um, he, within half an hour, was in working clothes, and he was a plumber, and he was a carpenter, and he was a painter, and he was a mechanic, and he did a lot of work. I often think that that's the reason that Mam and Dad moved to Bettystown, because there was so much work to be done in Palmerstown. I think Mam decided a new house was the best way to fix it and just stop Dad doing all those jobs. Uh, so Neve is going to bring forward the garden, uh, the, the, the secretaries. So passion, the garden, gardening was a real passion for Dad, um, although he always told me that uh, gardening was just totally trial and error. He really never knew what he was doing, even though he had a fantastic garden. Mam definitely was the brain. She bought all the plants and knew what to be planting. But when they moved from Palmerston, he had a wonderful garden. Um, and when, when they moved, there was a full lorry load of plants arrived down to Bettystown. And at 70 years of age, he started to build a new garden in Bettystown, and it's a wonderful credit to him. Um, where Nutgrove Shopping Centre is now used to be Lamb's Jam. And I remember as a kid going over uh, when they closed down, and we dug up the gooseberry plants and the blackberry plants, and, and we brought them, we planted in Palmerstown. Before that, actually, we, we, we did have to go to League Slip Cattle Mart to get bags of cow done, <laughs> which was a real challenge. So Anya's going to bring forward a book, and it's Irish history from 1870, which was a topic that Dad loved. Education was extremely important to him. He went to Sing Street School and got a scholarship, which he never got to take up because he started working very early. So um, most people who are late doing their leaving search would say, you know, they were held back a little bit in school, but Dad actually did his leaving cert in his mid-40s um, and uh, actually got better results in Irish than all of his children. <laughs> um, but, but Dad was my Google. Um, I, I kind of got lazy with him because if there was any subject that you didn't need to know about history or politics or geography, Dad knew it. Um, he talked about the Russian Empire, the French and Spanish revolutions, he talked about how... Uh, uh, the Arab nations were all split up, the Reformation, and he was an absolute expert on Irish history. So the next uh, symbol that uh, Larkin is going to bring forward is a trophy for dancing. So Dad loved dancing, it was a great passion of his, um, and he won many trophies for dancing. He actually uh, danced for the East Midlands uh, on a program called Come Dancing, which was a TV program many, many years ago. Uh, and when he moved to Laytown, he actually set up a dancing school um, and he taught most young couples around the area to dance for, the, for, for, for their upcoming weddings and he was very successful with it. <laughs> um, so Alan is going to bring forward a joke book, which is 101 dad jokes. Which <laughs> so uh, he, he said it was his secret book because he learned it off by heart and just repeated them all, but dad absolutely loved to tell a joke. He liked to make light of every situation and right outside the door of this church um, in 2018, Mum um, and Dad were knocked down and very seriously injured. So Dad's injuries were, were quite bad, and I remember going into the hospital to see him, and his face was completely black with all of the bruising. And he just looked at me and he said, you should see the other fella. <laughs> so he definitely tried to make light of it. Last year at, at Mum's funeral, um, it started to rain when we were in the graveyard, and the quickest way uh, to get Dad back was to go in the hearse. So he got into the hearse to travel back to the hotel, and when he got out, he said to the funeral director, you probably don't see many 90-year-olds getting out of one of these. <laughs> so, um, uh, Donald is gonna bring forward a mic, and that represents the love that Dad had for music and the passion that he had for singing. Um, 
He was in the Palmerstown Musical Society. He was in the RTE Choir. He was in the St. Peter's Choir. Um, he was in the choir here in this particular church. Uh, and he was a great singer. He loved singing in feshes and, and won many trophies for it. And actually, he practiced quite a bit when he was in the car. And um, I used to get a lift home from work uh, as far as Chapel Lizard. Uh, and every evening at about 20 past five, I'd be walking up Chapel, his, Chapel Lizard Hill and dad would go with his hand over his ear, practicing a song in the car, flying past me. And my friend's um, father, Sean Brannigan, came almost two minutes behind him every day and picked me up and said, is that not your father just gone past you there? Now you'd think when you tell him that he'd remember, but he was so engrossed in his music and he so much loved it. And we sang at a lot of weddings and a lot of funerals and I suppose in Palmerstown, most of my friends would say, we remember your dad for singing at our wedding and we remember your dad for singing at my parents' funerals. So Shay's gonna bring forward a picture of the, the family. And family was very important to dad. Uh, he was very good to his parents. He loved his own family, his brothers and sisters. And Helen, uh, his sister who's in Holland, said recently, Dad uh, and Ronnie were both like two extra fathers to him and, and they really appreciated it. And Dad certainly did, did make an effort with all of that. He loved his own family and he loved Mam's family. He was very close to all his Mam's fam uh, all of Mam's family. Um, and he loved his chats with Angela and, and with Breed in recent times. Um, and he loved his, us, all of his kids, and he said the most important thing that he ever achieved in his life was his family. So the next photograph that we're going to bring through is uh, Eliani, and it's a picture of Mam. So Mam was definitely the love of Dad's life, and I know when that accident happened outside the door, Dad actually tried to save Mam. And uh, he put his own life at risk. Uh, and took the big brunt of those injuries that particular day. So he wrote an awful lot of songs, uh, hundreds of songs in fact, and a lot of them are about Mam and love songs for Mam. She always said, stupid, but, <laughs> but, but he was the ever, ever romantic. And actually the last song that we're going to uh, play today at the, the end of the service is one that he wrote. Um, and Christmas was a really important time for Mam ma and Dad, and I want to thank Sinead again for hosting us all. We had six adults that arrived up to Sinead's house every day at Christmas, but it gave us an opportunity to spend time with them. And to see Mam and Dad exchanging gifts at, in their 80s, as though they were teenagers, and holding hands was just a lovely thing. And to see them singing at the end of the night was a lovely thing. So in summary, Dad had a great life. Um, he was born 10 years before this state was actually formed. Um, and he remembered a bomb being dropped on the South Circular Road uh, in World War II. Um, he was engaging and a great gent. And his Abba song says, thank you for the music. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant Michael to be inscribed in the book of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. So now we have our readings from the scriptures and Kenneth is going to read the first reading. And then after the psalm is sung, Sinead will sing the second. Read. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. 
the Lord God will destroy death forever. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all the nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Death is swallowed up in victory. I will tell you something that has been secret, that we are not going to die, but we shall be changed. This will be instantaneous in the twinkling of an eye. When the last trumpet sounds, it will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed as well because our present perishable nature must put on imperishability and this mortal nature must put on immortality when this perishable nature has been put on imperishability and when this mortal nature has put on immortality then the words of scripture will come true Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and the sin gets over its power from the law. So let us thank God for giving us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Carrying his own cross, Jesus went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. And then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in the vinegar on a hyssop tree, they held it up to his mouth. And after Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated just for a few moments. As you know, this week we're making our way through Holy Week. It's the week when we recall Jesus' Last Supper, his crucifixion and his resurrection. It's the high point of the church's liturgical year. It's a week where, when we read through the scripture accounts, we find people with whom many of us can identify, people who are searching for meaning in life, people struggling with death, people unsure of their ground, people baffled by what happens, people with broken hearts, people struggling with the cruelty of life and death. If you think even of Mary who was standing at the foot of the cross, the mother of Jesus, and what must have been going through her mind as she held Jesus taken down from the cross in her arms. The memories of the past with his hardships, the happy memories too. She must have remembered the cold of the Bethlehem stable. Maybe she recalled the time he was lost in the temple in Jerusalem. She must have thought about the amazing day at Cana when he turned water into wine. She would have remembered his teaching, his healing, his preaching, and the comfort that Jesus brought to people. She must have worried about what he was getting himself into when the crowds were turning against him. But the constant in Mary's life was her trust in God. Mary's trust in God never faltered, no matter what the situation. She had unshakable trust in God's providential care. She knew that there was no problem in life that God could not turn around. There was no problem in life that God could not make good. And even in the deep sorrow that she experienced as she held her son in her arms, she knew she could trust God. Mary is a good model for us at times when we're asked to put our trust in God. And she was right to trust because Mary discovered, as we know now, that the death of Jesus wasn't the end. In the Gospel of the Easter Vigil tonight and in the Gospels of Easter Sunday tomorrow, we're going to hear the news. People will come to the tomb where Jesus had been buried and they'll discover something startling. The body of Jesus isn't there. And that's all that we'll hear tonight and tomorrow. The tomb was empty. It takes us to hear all the Gospels of the weekdays next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and right up to next Sunday, to hear where exactly Jesus is. Jesus isn't in the tomb because he has risen. And he appears to his disciples in such a way that they cannot believe it at first. It takes them a while for them to understand this new way of Jesus being present with them. 
and then they're sent out. There can be no keeping quiet when it comes to spreading the news of the resurrection and new life and the news of God's merciful love, which is the foundation of our faith. Over the past few days, we have been recalling Michael's strong faith. Church and faith were very important to him. And for Michael, it was more than just saying the prayers or even singing the hymns. His faith shone through in his day-to-day life, in the love he shared with Maureen, and in his love of family, teaching, telling all those stories from history, leading by example, giving you all a great start in life. And so enjoying the company of the extended family as it grew, and the grandchildren too as they came along. I think Anthony described his dad beautifully for us this morning, how he was animated by family life, and the love of life in general, tending to the plants and the garden and taking pride in it, doing his bit for creation, enjoying the fun of sport, the times of partying together, And of course, his love of everything to do with music and dance. As Anthony mentioned, I enjoyed one of the comments online from one of his work colleagues in Pitney Bowes, particularly all the comments that spoke of the gentleman that he was, but one comment in particular that talked about how he would spend the whole day at work, always singing as he went around in the office, cheering everybody up as he went. And for us in the parish here and in our church choir, it was enriching and our blessing that after 40 years in Palmerstown, Maureen and Michael came to live here. Michael embodied everything that is good about religion and faith. They both did. And you could see it in the way that he lived his faith with honesty and trustworthiness, dependability. People felt both welcome and relaxed in his presence. And it was great to see them here coming for Mass each week. I don't think I ever found Michael in bad form. He always had something positive to say. And he'd leave here after his prayers and hymn singing, full of energy and full of life, ready for the week that lay ahead. Going out with the good news, making his contribution to family and community. So many people have mentioned over the last few days that he used his talents and creativity well and that he was an inspiration for them. He gave them a start in life and his voice was strong to the end. Maria was telling me this morning that the piece that we'll hear at the end of our ceremony was recorded when Michael was 90 and it was no bother to him. Michael has left us many memories of good times together Memories that ease our sorrow as we must say farewell. We remember today how Christ died and how he rose again. And how the sorrow of his friends was replaced with a joy that saw no end. May you be filled with the happiest of memories of your dad, granddad, brother and friend as you grieve his loss. And may you be comforted by the assurances of Christ that Michael will be rewarded for his great kindness and that we will see him again when we are all reunited with him and with Maureen and all those we love who have passed. May our faith in Christ's resurrection be strengthened on this holy Saturday, that with trust, the kind of trust that Mary had as she held her son Jesus in her arms, and with the belief that Michael believed his faith, that we will find joy that was in his lifetime and which brought him to fulfilment in eternity. We pray that eternal rest will be granted unto him, that he will rest in peace. Amen.
Please stand now for our prayers of the faithful. And Karen, Michael, John, Anya, Radin, and Mary will lead us in the prayers. For all who mourn Michael, thinking of his sister-in-law Helen and his sister-in-law Breeds, who is unable to attend this Mass here today, may we all receive the strength to help us in our sadness and grief. May we draw inspiration from the joy Michael brought to all our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we are all gathered here today in love, we pray for all of our family and friends who have departed this life, remembering especially Michael's dear wife, Maureen, and all of our loved ones that have gone before us. May the pain of their sorrow be softened and that the emptiness be filled with the love of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember today all those that are unwell or suffering around the world. May they find strength from their pain and suffering in the arms of their loved ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Michael was a wonderful husband, father, brother, grandfather and friend and showed kindness and compassion to all who met him. Michael made this world a better place and we were truly gifted to have known and loved him. We give thanks to the love and care that Michael showed us all during his life. May he continue to inspire us. May he know the fulfillment of that love as he rests now in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those who do not have access to basic health care, adequate food or shelter. Those who are discriminated against for their race, gender or their religion. We give thanks for our blessings and strive to teach our children the way of tolerance, justice and peace. These were the qualities that Michael embodied and we hope these prin principles may prevail throughout the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all those who cared for Michael. We would especially like to thank his carer, Bridget, for her kindness, patience and compassion. We are also grateful for the skills and commitment of his carers from Comfort Keepers who looked after Michael at home. Michael spent his final weeks in the loving care of Silver Stream Nursing Home where he was cared for so well and made to feel so comfortable. May they all be rewarded for their kindness and gentleness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, whose days are without end and whose mercies are beyond counting, keep us mindful that life is short and the hour of death unknown. Let your spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of holiness and justice, that we may serve you in union with the whole church, sure in faith, strong in hope, perfect in love. And when our earthly journey is ended, lead us rejoicing into your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And Michelle is going to read a communion reflection. You want to be seated. I'm going to read out the lyrics of a song that Dad wrote about 60 years ago but I think they're particularly appropriate for today. Love will find a way. My peace to you, take my hand. Walk together to the promised land and we won't go astray. My peace to you, don't be blind. Every river has a sea to find and someday soon we pray that love will find a way. A way to bring peace to a troubled world full of fear. 
The dawn of a new day will come when we can all hear. So be strong, sing your song, build a new world where the old went wrong. And someday soon we pray that love will find a way. Please stand now. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Michael and now we come to the last farewell. There's sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Michael again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
response to the song of farewell is receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. The Saints of God come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. The May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Michael in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Michael in this life, they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother Michael forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And in peace now let us take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs>